Ooh, hey there, it is Angie M. And I am just trying to get in some planner play. I realized I had not filmed it because I have been filming some other things for next week, but I am going to, I am going to actually fit this with a video for next week that I believe is slated for next week, Friday. These are kind of the color schemes I've been into right now. How I mean is I'm going to do a get ready with me where I intended to talk about how I plan, but I actually think that it will work very well with this planner play. I had been in my A6. I jumped into my half letter because I really do love my half letter, but my heart is with the A6. So in less than a week, I have jumped back into my A6. So not much has changed. I've still got all of my to-dos. I put my little notes in. See, here are my notes for next week when I do a little get ready with me where I talk about how I plan. I love these cloth and paper cards and I have been trying to find good uses for them since I decided to keep them. And I thought this was actually a really great use to be able to talk about what my daily process looks like. I have some other notes and things that I want to get on the filming block. And then not much has changed in the inspiration section. So I'm just going to flip here to my handy dandy tracker. For those of you who have been following me and seen other videos, you know I have a love-hate relationship with trackers. It's a thing. I feel like I get obsessed and super into wanting to fill out the tracker. But I also, at the same time, when I'm not tracking, I do feel like there are things that I want to track. So what I did is I took my little Zig Clean Color Dot. There are a number of places you can get these if you look online. I believe Jet Pens might actually have a bunch of these in different colors now. I think that was the last place I saw a posting of a lot of colors. I think you can also find them on Amazon now as well, where I could not find them when I actually purchased this one from, I believe, let's make it sparkle.com. All right. So I do, I do have this, this guy here started out and I do want to track some chores because I feel like we're doing stuff all the time and I'm just wondering if there might be a more efficient way to do it. I did pick up this insert from Paper Test Designs. I love Paper Test Designs. How I would use this kind of an insert because it does flip this way is I would take it off and I would flip it around for next month so that it stays in the same direction. So that's how I would do that. Just kind of my process there. And I wanted to, I wanted to also use it to track chores instead of having a separate ch chore tracker because of that I can use the dauber to mark down the days where I'm intending to do something and then I can, ch I can cross it off and it's all good. And then I can keep a schedule I also highlighted the weekends just so we know when the weekends live, right? Right? As if weekends are somehow different than weekdays at this point in life. They're, they're not, they're really not. But that is probably the biggest change to my tracker. I've got a video coming in the next few weeks where I talk about, you know, like no spend anxiety. We're gonna be continuing with that series. I really haven't been tracking things as closely as I should because I just, I forget and I get busy. And stuff has been falling through the cracks and that's not an excuse. We should always know what our spending habits are, but it is a thing whether I like it or not. All right, so I did change this setup back. So I had it months, weeks, and then dailies thinking that I wasn't going to do dailies, but I realized when I was in my half letter and just had the entire month together that I like that so much more. I don't really live in a monthly planning page in A6, I think the smallest monthly planning page that really works from a logistical standpoint for me is in the half letter. So this I just kind of use to track the little things. It's gonna get cluttered really quickly the more I try to put on there. Again, I in my bigger planners where there's more room, I live in it. I don't really live in it in here and that is fine. I still like to have a monthly for quick reference, but where I find I really live in these are here in these paper test design weeklies. What I found is I really like having the weekly tracker. I like having the big tracker as well so I can see everything at once. I can put this week's schedule so the days things are supposed to be up so I can make sure I have those done. And then I can 
focus in on what I need to film for next week, what I need to edit for next week and getting it all in there. We actually, if you see this here, we, I, my daughter's three and she's had this weird diaper rash. In my defense, as I get to this, I had to take her to the doctor last night because when I went to wipe, we got home and she needed to be changed. She was just in tears. And I tried to get like what hurts and she had some diaper rash, but it didn't look like it was open or like it should be anything that was being painful. It actually looked like it was getting better. And just, oh, my poor baby was in tears. And so once I got everything up, I took it, I took it back off because she said it was sand and she plays in sand at, at, at daycare and she has a tendency to shove sand in every pocket and you know, down her pants. and. It's a thing. So I was like, well, let me let me take a look at this. Maybe maybe there was sand I didn't see and I wiped too hard. But when I looked, I'm like, there is no sand. Like, usually I know if there's sand because it will like pour out sort of situation. And there, I couldn't even see like little pieces of sand. And she is just in tears that it hurts. And so it hurt to sit. So I'm looking at the, at the rash and in the past, whenever she's had a rash, it's either come after she's had some kind of illness, rashes can be related to viral stuff, which I had no idea until I had a kid. You know, she's never had an actual diaper rash. It's always, if there's ever been a rash, it's been related to something. And we are Pampers users. When we were in the hospital after I had her, they, they gave us huggies and I was like, yep, nope. We've always just used Pampers with her and we use the Pampers Easy Ups now. The problem with the Easy Ups is they don't have tabs. It's it's literally like underwear style. It's like the 360 style if you're using their diaper version. But those she always seemed to stay really dry in. And even when she'd had a lot to drink and would go to the bathroom, they never really seemed full. Well, when she goes to daycare, she needed Velcro ones because with the Pampers Easy Ups, you have to take off her shoes and her pants to get them back on, like the new ones on, right? You kind of rip them, rip the sides to take them off. So we've either used like our, our grocery store's generic has Velcro and so do Huggies. So I had bought a big old box of Huggies because on the, the occasions recently where we have left the house and we're starting to venture out more and things are starting to change, I can't lay her down on one of those changing tables. She's, she weighs all of 32 pounds, but she's three she's as long as the table is it's suspended in the air it doesn't feel secure to her she freaks out has a fit and i need to be able to change her and it was like well the, the velcro on the sides is going to be perfect because then i don't have to worry about laying her down or taking off her her pants and her shoes but my husband and i did notice using the huggies at home and i and Huggies are probably perfectly fine for a, for a kiddo who is actively potty training. My daughter can hold it for three hours and not use the potty. Oh, she can hold it. She is totally ready for potty training. She just refuses to go on the potty. And we keep we keep working on it, but it's, just, it's not her jam. One night she literally held it for three hours and then filled up a diaper or filled up a pull-up for me once I put it on. So, okay. So now we've switched over fully to Huggies. We had noticed prior to that, that she would get some kind of diaper rash at daycare. And then it would like seem to go away over the weekend when she was home with us. And, and we just were like, well, you know, we're just, you know, we're a one kid household. We, we can be super attentive to getting things changed right away. All other good stuff. Like maybe it's not that. She also has some sensitivities to fruit and other things that can irritate her skin. So, okay. All right, well, last night, to take her take her to the pediatrician. They had an opening, which was great. And, you know, my first thought is, if this is related to something that's, you know, if this is related to some kind of illness, she's going to be home for the next 14 days, and, like, this is going to become an entire thing for our household, potentially could become a thing for her daycare. Like, the state of the world right now, there are all kinds, I'm just going to flip through here as I'm talking, there are all kinds of other concerns that now come up anytime something happens. Nope, nope, nope. It was good old fashioned diaper rash. You can see that I haven't been in this this week. Literally guys, legit diaper rash. And this, the pedi her pediatrician wasn't available. So the pediatrician that, that we met with, he was, looking, he was looking at what she was wearing and he goes, 
you know, those, those are, those are, are, are training pants. He goes, they're, they're designed so that they don't keep them as dry so that they know, you know, Hey, I'm wet. I need to go to the potty kind of thing. And my heart immediately sank because my daughter doesn't care if she's wet at all. Like it does not, it doesn't phase her at this stage in the game. So came home and my husband and I were talking about it. And we were like, we have never had this problem with the Pampers ever. The Pampers keep her drier. If she goes to the bathroom, even if it, even if she's had the same amount to drink, it's not like it's filled up. And the pediatrician told us that the pull-ups overnight cause irritation because they're sitting in it overnight and I'm like our Pampers have never done that so we are switching back to Pampers and I'm trying to figure out an alternative for daycare because I don't know if the generics had had an issue or if it is just the Huggies and again it's not a knock on Huggies I have a feeling that Pampers is designed to be absorbent like a diaper the Pampers Easy Ups look exactly like their Pampers 360s, which are for the little ones who are crawling and they are just more absorbent and keep her super dry, which is good because she's not peeing in the potty consistently, even at school. She likes to go, uh, we, we call daycare school, it's a thing. But uh, there she'll, she will pee in the potty there, but there are times where she won't. So, and she doesn't say anything when she has to go. We're again, we're, we're working on it. It's a work in progress. I can't force her to do it and we don't want to make it traumatic. So we're, she's going to go off to college wearing, wearing a diaper at this, at this rate, but I digress. So I, I don't know if it's just the huggies and that her skin is so sensitive that we have to make sure that we're just using the proper pull up and that we need to switch back. If it looks like the diaper rash gets worse during the week and then better on the weekend, I think that is going to be our answer. But it is a thing. So yeah, we did We did last night, we did end up at the doctor for her. I felt so embarrassed because I was like, wait, wait, that's what, that's what legit diaper rash looks like? It, it didn't even look bad, but it hurt her. So clearly it was starting to open and the spots that were affected were getting worse. But now we figured it out, we're, we're gonna get back we're gonna get back on track. So I really do enjoy using the dailies to keep the schedule. What is nice about the paper test weekly is that I can do that here as well. Like I can do a mini abbreviated version. So I have been trying to evaluate if I just need a weekly or if I need a daily, but honestly, I like the dailies as well. I feel like in this A6 planner, the weekly is not a sufficient size. In the half letter, I could probably go without using dailies and just use the weekly because there's it, it's bigger. It is a lot bigger. There's a lot more space. It is a thing. And this is what, you know, what the week looks like. And then when I get to next week, here it is in all its glory. And there we go. And then in a video next Friday, I will get into a little bit more detail about how I think about planning and how, I, how I'm how i looking at planning. I also, from that tracker, I did put down on the days I intend to do things. So I know they are on the week, they are on the daily. Let me show you, here's the 12th, they are on the daily. So I'm like, this needs to get done this particular day and I can move forward and get it done. And, you know, basically just trying to make sure that I'm being effective in my planning and actually using my planner for things I'm planning and not just writing stuff down and then never doing or accomplishing it. And personally, I view a planner almost as a journal and a record of things I have done in a given time span. I know, aren't these pens beautiful? Uh, when you see this, it will be a couple days later, so I don't know what pens will be available, but Shop Villa Beautiful, who makes these beautiful pens, will have their will have had their rainbow wrong button will have had their rainbow color colored pens up since when I'm filming this on Thursday quite beautiful I might have picked up just the red pen I looked at the other pens I looked at my collection I went some of the stuff is similar some of the stuff I would never reach for it's not really in my wheelhouse I don't want to buy things to just buy things but that juicy red pen I just do not have and that is a missing spot in my collection as always, I just try to use my stuff. I have an obsession with pens and markers and stationery and all kinds of other things. It is a hot button for me. I am trying to watch it. 
and just remember that I have an abundance of things and if I'm not using them or giving them the love that they deserve and need, at some point I am going to have to bite the bullet and decide what I want to let go. I have tried that now several times and quite frankly I can't do it because every time I'm like, this pen doesn't fit in my collection, I look over and it's not there and I miss it. So that that's a thing for me, but I am not going to double up. I have three green pens. I don't need a lime green pen as beautiful as it is. I have their highlighter yellow. I don't need another yellow pen. You would almost think that the orange is a slam dunk for me. I don't need an orange pen though, and I honestly don't think I would reach for it. I much prefer that in an ink color than I do in a barrel color. I already have a blue pen. The ultraviolet almost got me until I realized the lavender one I already have, I'm just looking over, is a hands down favorite. And the ultraviolet would not compare with that. The other purplish one they have was just a tone that was not my jam. So it was really easy to whittle down. I had also looked at getting, like they still have mocha and flat white and those guys. And I just, I looked at them and I'm like, they're beautiful, but I have two brown pens that I absolutely love. Where would those fit in my collection? You know what, I'm not gonna buy it. Let's just leave it for someone who stumbles on it and loves it and it's their thing. And then it's there for them to purchase and not just purchase stuff to purchase stuff. So. That, that is a good thing, that is a good thing today, but I am going to leave it at that and I will catch y'all in the next one.